In this video, we want to talk about how to write a vector as a linear combination of a set of other vectors. So basically, like the last two videos where we answered this question and this question, these are all the same question. Um, because if you can write one vector as a linear combination of the others, then it's in the span because that's the set of all linear combinations. And if it is a linear combination, then it is, well, then it satisfies the first one as well. So really, these are all the same question. And uh, you might just get asked different variations of this to try and throw you off. But really, just like the, just like the last two videos, all we do is we, we take our target vector basically here. So say the question might be saying, write w as a linear combination of u and uh, v. So when you, once, you're, once you've organized it or once you've been given this question, we write the target as the right-hand column of an augmented matrix, and then we write all of the other vectors that we're given. We could even have more than two, um, but we write all of those as the columns on the left-hand side of the augmented matrix. So what we do is we set it up like this. Actually, I think it'll have to be a little bit taller in this case. Um, so we're gonna first put in U and then V and then our column here for W and then close that all off. So what we want to do here now is just perform elementary row operations until we can get this thing in reduced row echelon form. But basically the answer to the question is we want to have a statement uh, that is some scalar, let's just call it any letter that we want. So I'll just say X, uh, so X times U plus y times v. You could say c1 and c2 or a and b, just x and y in this case are the scalars, u and v are the vectors, is equal to w. So this is the expression that your professor would be looking for. And uh, if you can get an expression like this where x and y are scalars, then yeah, that is the linear, then we are basically writing w as a linear combination of u and v. So let's get started here with our elementary row operations. Um, I think the first thing that we can do here is r3 minus two, uh, two r2, and then we can also do r4 plus r2, r4 plus r2, right? We wanna clear these out to be zeros uh, as soon as we can. So the first two rows are going to be unaffected. And then when we have r3 minus 2 r2, so this uh, this entry here, 2 minus 2 times 1 is going to be 0. 2 minus 2 times 0 is still 2. And then negative 2 minus 2 times 4, so that's negative 2 minus 8. That's going to bring this value to negative 10. Um, here we have r4 plus r2, so negative 1 plus 1 is 0. 1 plus 0 is 1 and negative nine plus four is negative five. All right, we can close that off. Okay, so the next elementary row operations that we can do would be uh, R1 minus R2. We can knock out that zero there, or that one. So we'll have R1 minus R2. And then let's divide row three by two. So R3 divided by two. Okay, so when we do this, we have one minus one, that's going to be a zero. 3 minus 0, that stays a 3. A negative 11 minus 4, that brings us to negative 15. Um, row 2 is unaffected, so we have 1, 0, and 4. Our 3, we're dividing by 2, so that stays as a 0. That goes to 1, and that becomes negative 5. And then our 4 is, uh, we're not doing anything to it in this step, so that's 0, 1, and negative 5. All right. Let's actually switch rows um, one and two. So we have R1 switch with R2. And before we do that, let's also just divide what is originally, like what is R1 right now by three. So we'll also just do R1 divided by three. So when we write that out down here, um, we're gonna switch the order. So we'll bring up R2. So it'll be zero, one, zero, um, four. And then we're going to bring down R1, but we're also going to divide it by 3 at the same time. If you're not comfortable with doing two elementary row operations in the same step, then don't. You can like really easily make mistakes, but this one's pretty easy. We just get 1, uh, sorry, 0, 1, and uh, negative 5. And then R3 and 4 stayed the same. That was 0, 1, negative 5, and 0, 1, and negative 5. All right, so the last thing that we want to do here, I think, is just go... Um, R3 minus R2 and R4 minus R2. 
So that's going to keep the first two rows the same. So we get zero, or sorry, one, zero, uh, positive four, and then zero, one, negative five. And then this stuff all becomes zeros, right? Because one minus one is zero. And then, yeah, those become zeros as well. All right, so when we look at this, we have a whole row of zeros equal to a zero, whole row of zeros equal to zero. We don't have a row of zeros equal to a number. If we had that situation, that would mean that there is no solution. Um, but we do have a solution. We have at least one. And uh, we actually only have one because when we look at the uh, the leading entry is basically always to the above and below those. We just have zeros. So that indicates to us that we have a single unique solution. And really the solution is um, is just x equals 4 and uh, y equals negative 5. There's just one way to represent w as a linear combination of u and v. And basically that is just, if we just plug these in, we just have 4u um, plus negative 5 v is equal to w. So really this is the answer to the question or you could also expand it out just a little bit if you want but either of these would be good enough for your solution. So you could write that one or you can write that one. So yeah, this is how you write W as a linear combination of U and V. Um, and then inherently that also means that W is in the span of U and V because there is at least one solution. And if it's in the span, then that means W is a linear combination of U and V.